Hi, Dr. Dolly. I uh, have a question that's probably kind of dumb, but if you will indulge me regarding a uh, taxable account, how often and when are we actually taxed? So for example, if you have 500 shares of like BTI in a Vanguard account, are you taxed capital gains only when you withdraw it? Are you taxed annually? Uh, are you taxed on shares that are sold and bought within the ETF? So quarterly? I'm trying to understand. Uh, it seems to me that probably you'll have to pay some capital gains periodically, even if you don't sell the shares. Do I understand that correctly? Or can I buy a bunch of shares of an ETF, leave it there for years and years, and I only pay when I sell it? I'm sort of, sort of confused about that. Um, if you could dumb it down for me, I would really appreciate it. Thanks so much. Great question, Diana. I, I like this question a lot. Um, it's important to start, however, uh, from the perspective that this is not a bank account. Okay, It's not about withdrawing money from the account. Within this account, you own stuff. And when that stuff does something, or when you do something to that stuff in that account, taxes generally result. Uh, Thisha, you want to run us through the various taxes that people pay on investments? Okay. So we're talking about a brokerage account. Um, in a brokerage account, you pay taxes in several different ways. The first time you might trigger taxes is capital gains. So that's the difference between the sale price and the cost basis or what you paid for it. Um, if you sell your uh, share, your stock, your bond, um, and within a year of buying it, that's, a, that's subject to short-term capital gains. And that's taxed taxed at your ordinary income. So all the way up to 39.6%. So we try to avoid that as much well, as possible. Well, 37% these days. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, and uh, long-term taxes, uh, capital gains taxes are a lot more favorable to you. Um, if you sell in uh, after a year from buying the equity, then your tax at a more favorable 15%, usually at most. Um, there's an exception. If you uh, earn less than 80K marriage, then you would be at 0% capital gains tax. Or if you um, earn more than about 500K married, then you would pay 20%. Again, that's usually much less than your ordinary income tax. So ca long-term capital gains tax is kind of what we aim for if we have to um, take the, the equity out or sell it at some point. Um, another point you might get taxed is when your stock pays out dividends. So dividends are when you are their payments made from the business to its shareholders, shareholders that have invested in it. And this happens periodically. Um, generally, uh, if uh, in most index funds you have qualified dividends, so these are dividends that have give the gotten permission from the IRS to be taxed at long-term rates, the more favorable rates. So qualified dividends are preferable. Ordinary dividends are taxed at short term or your order, ordinary income tax rate. Another time you might get taxes when your money earns interest. So interest in any account, savings, money market account, um, money market income is taxed at your ordinary income. And finally, if you own mutual funds that are actively managed, then whenever those active managers do trades and sell something, those capital gains from that, the sale of uh, the equity in that fund are passed on to the investors. So that's something that you need to know if you own mutual funds. Yeah, you got to be careful about that. Uh, I mean, in a lot of ways, the mutual funds uh, can burn you. You can actually lose money in a mutual fund and have them send you capital gains that you have to pay taxes on. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the more actively managed the mutual fund, the more you do not want it in a taxable account because it can really, really burn you that way. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing to keep in mind, if you're a relatively high earner, more than 200 single, more than 250 married, uh, you also got to pay, pay Obamacare taxes on your investments. Uh, and so that's an additional tax that you have to pay of, uh, what is it? 3.8%, 3 I think. 3.6, 3.8, one of those two. Don't quote me on it. Um, but you got to pay on every capital gains, every qualified dividend, et cetera. And also here's another pearl. If you are into tax loss harvesting, which is trying to get tax losses, right? To use to offset your capital gains, be uh, advised that if you do not hold 
an investment for at least 60 days around the time a dividend is paid, that dividend becomes non-qualified and you pay ordinary income tax rates on it rather than the uh, the lower qualified dividend rate on it. So I've gotten burned on that before. You got to be a little bit careful with that when you're doing tax loss harvesting, especially. That's good to know. Um, Oh, one other thing. She, she's asking about when do you actually pay these taxes? Now, our tax system, our federal tax system anyway, and many state tax systems are pay as you go. So you're supposed to pay as you go along. If you realize a big, huge capital gain in February, you're supposed to pay that in the first quarter of the year. Now, a lot of people are not having big, huge capital gains, and they can just cover all the taxes they owe by having money withheld from their paychecks. Um, but if you are having to make quarterly estimated tax payments and you make a lot more money in, in you know, uh, early in the year, you're supposed to pay taxes on that money when it comes in. So you got to be careful about that. You may end up getting some tax penalties if you don't do that. But for most people, for relatively small capital gains, uh, that's not a big deal. You can just, you know, settle it up basically the next April uh, when your tax return goes in. If you want your questions answered by the White Coat Investor, record your question at whitecoatinvestor.com slash YQA or click the link in the description. The hosts of the White Coat Investor podcast are not licensed accountants, attorneys, or financial advisors. This podcast is free entertainment and information only. It should not be considered professional or personalized financial advice. You should consult the appropriate professional for specific advice relating to your situation.